Yeah. If you're watching this video right now, watching this live stream, if you're watching this on YouTube live, you're watching this on Facebook live, you watch this in an archive. We're talking about money during this podcast. We're talking about money during this stream. Um, listen, guys, oftentimes people get distracted by entertainment, funny videos, uh, 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 cats doing something and whatever. This, this is all about money. And sometimes this is a topic a lot of people love to avoid. Listen, I'm talking about putting money in your pocket. So if you want to know how to solve a lot of your money issues in 2018, you listen to the right live stream. You listen to the right um, uh, uh, archive show. And and I want to help you make a six-figure, seven-figure income. And I'm just, just not talking about a guy that's talking about how to do it. We're talking about people that are actually doing it, myself included. And uh, the guests that I have here online with us are $100,000 year earners themselves, and they're not stopping. A lot of momentum is going their way. So – What's going on, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Sapala here, hailing to you from the Money Smart Team headquarters in Oak Brook, Illinois, a suburb of downtown Chicago. And I got some awesome, awesome, awesome friends and guests in business, in the insurance industry, talking to you about making a hundred thousand dollar income. Why? Here's some facts. Facts that it's hard for us to refute. Of all baby boomers today, those between uh mid fifties. Uh, born between 1946 uh, and 1964, which is kind of like the general age range of what we call baby boomers, according to Fidelity, less than $80,000 total in savings, total in savings. And yet retirement and being financially independent is right around the corner. The average millennial today has zero in savings, zero, according to a recent survey. So we're going to talk about that. The reason why people aren't saving more is because they're not what? making enough money. So I'm excited to bring on a couple of my guests here on the show, on the Movement Podcast, on the Money Smart Guy Facebook page. we got Donna Malikin from Los Angeles in three months, crossed over $100,000 in cash flow. How many months? Three months. So you would be behooved to share this video, to like and comment and interact. Why? Because we're going to be answering some of your questions. We're going to go over a couple of things that's on our mind, and we'd love to get involved in helping you make more money in 2018 this year. Also, we got Tommy Clark, who just yesterday's uh, uh, we just had a conversation yesterday. He just crossed over the hundred thousand dollar income mark, and uh, guys, you're going to hear from their story. So, without further ado, man, let's jump right into the so Donna, Tommy, welcome to the movement. Thank you, Matt. Thank you so much. How are you doing today? Great, cool. So let's talk about your background. So, Tommy, if I don't know if you mind, but ladies first, shall we? Absolutely. So, 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 Diana, what were you doing before you decided to become an entrepreneur in the insurance industry? So prior to becoming an entrepreneur in the insurance industry, I was in the car industry, right? And for those of you that are involved in the car industry, it's kind of like we call it our black hole. Once you're in working 12, 13, 14 hours a day, seven days a week, you never get out. For about two and a half years, that's what I did. Uh, prior to that, I was in banking, retail banking with Wells Fargo, and then retail prior to that. Got it. Very good. So cars and retail. So you're on the retail side. So uh, did, did you go to Harvard? Did you go to Wharton Business School, uh, Stanford? <laughs> no, sir. I absolutely did not. Um all I did was invest a couple hundred dollars in myself and um, believed in the love and the drive of the insurance and investment company and really about helping people. I love it. So, I love it. Yeah. So, so in other words, Donna doesn't come from a pedigree. She, she is, uh, she is uh, just a hardworking gal and uh, knows how to follow the system and get things done. What about you, Tommy? Can you give us a little bit about your background? Yeah, absolutely. So, Matt, I, I was a mortgage guy for uh, for five years, and uh, I, I actually went to a school down here. We call it the Harvard of the South, but we call it that because you actually pay for your degree. You don't really learn anything, right? And, uh, shoot, I, I, I actually was sick and tired of just sitting behind a desk all day long and, and, and taking orders, and uh, I wanted to kind of take life into my own hands. And I said, you know, uh, I'm looking for somebody to teach me. I had a good friend of mine that was in the insurance industry, was opening up an office, and he says, why don't you jump in? And shoot, we just, you know, took the bull by the horns and started running. That's awesome. Awesome. So, again, uh, so you did you go to JU? Yep, I went to JU. Uh, JU, for those of you that aren't from Jacksonville, Florida, it's uh, Duval. 
<laughs> right, that's Jacksonville, Florida. Yeah. So, uh, very cool. And for those of you guys that aren't familiar with my story, I came from the military. I was in Marine Corps background. For those of you watching this and stumbling across this for the very first time, I do not have a college degree. I, I, I however, um, uh, do have a PhD, which is a public high school diploma. Okay. And so uh, with that PhD and somebody teaching me entrepreneurship, I was able to obtain my MBA, my massive bank account. So uh, with that being said, let's talk about making some money here. So um, I've been reading this book, guys. I was very intrigued by this, why the rich are getting richer. I've been absolutely intrigued by why this happens. So you guys deal with people with finances every day. So Donna, what are you, what are you hearing from people when they say, man, Don, I just can't get ahead. At times it's tough, you know, because you're helping people with their finances. What kind of feedback are you getting from your clients out there? Absolutely. I think the bottom line, Matt, is that a lot of people are just not educated because there's not individuals that take the time to sit down and go through their portfolios. They're just always like, you know, I thought I had to live paycheck to paycheck. I didn't know that I had another option. I didn't know that I have any help um, working nine to five super frustrated so when you're able to relate to individuals on that level right because we've all been there nine to five frustrated and show them light at the end of the tunnel that just by being organized and allowing us to sit down and help them with their finances they don't have to work in retirement at walmart because social security is not cutting it we have a plan we can help people you know whether it's twenty dollars a month that a starving student's putting aside or 10000 a month that the designer of Fiat's putting aside, whatever it is. So it's just a matter of coming up with a plan. By the way, Donna, is there one N your name or two Ns? One N. One N. Okay, we'll make sure we'll make sure make this adjust, but we want to know everybody to know your name. Donna with one N, Malikian. Cool. Yeah. So um, Tommy, what's going on? What's going on in your end, brother? Yeah, so uh, I, I mean, I'm hearing the same thing uh, that, that Donna is talking about. And, and one of the other things that um, I, I think the industry in general can get better at is, is building more relationships inside of the community. So like, for example, today I'm, I'm having a, um, a lunch with a, a local business owner and um, he does a lot of the professional training and stuff for a lot of the pro athletes around here. And these are guys, you know, that they have private pensions and stuff already designated through, you know, their their sport, so to speak. And they're still looking for somebody that they can trust outside of their work spot, be it the NFL, be it the MLB, be it the NBA, where they can actually trust somebody to say, hey, uh, I know that you're really here to do what's right for me rather than to just make a dollar off of me. You know, that's pretty interesting you say that, Tommy, because I know uh, working with a lot of uh, pro athletes, NFL, NBA, MLB, MLS, they usually have their own network of professional people to help them with their finances. And you usually have to go through a screening process and you got to pay the union X amount of dollars. Like, for example, the NFL, you got to pay the NFL PA, I think, $5,000 a year just to be part of the catalog of advisors or trusted people that these players can use. So even with that resource, players are still looking for people. Why do you think? Yeah, well, I, I think it's um, like if you see in the news, you know, Tim Duncan was a guy that played in the NBA for 22 years. Um, his advisor didn't come out until the end was actually, you know, kind of using his resources to, to pocket his own, you know, pockets. Yeah. Uh, there, there's guys like Vin Baker, uh, Antoine Walker and all these other guys that have made hundreds of millions of dollars. I mean, look at Warren Sapp, for example. And it, it's it's not that the associations don't take good care of them. It's that the people privately don't really address, hey, how money works and how do we keep as much money in your pocket? And I think that's starting to wake some of these players up to understanding that, hey, look, the union's there for us, yes, but what do we do personally? Yeah, absolutely. You know, when, when you're looking at finances, where is that today? Donna, you've got all sorts of age groups in your agency. You know, I, I had the pleasure of speaking with you and your team, I think it was like three months ago. And um, you've got all sorts of age groups and dem uh, ethnic demographics in your team. Um, does, does it matter? Um, does it matter? So in your opinion, does it matter where people come from to start making a change in their financial life? Absolutely not. I mean, me, myself, personally, my, my children are going to be first generation Americans. So it's not like my parents know anything about compound interest or any of that. They learned it when they came here They're It's so funny because, you know, their idea of retirement is like Persian rugs and real estate, right? 
But um, <laughs> it's just a matter of getting educated because those are tangible things that can be sold. And then what? But if you understand compound interest and you have somebody guiding you through it, whether it's a dollar you're trying to trying to save or $100,000 um, and just, you know, get it organized and simplified, it's super easy. And then you retire, you know, quadruple of what you've been putting aside, depending on what obviously the vehicle is and what works for that individual. And there's a lot of different vehicles for many, many different individuals. It's just a matter of helping enough people and being a part of your community and having a center of influence. That's, that's really helped me a lot as well. So having a center of influence, uh, make introductions for you. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Because they have, um, you know, the people rely on them, whether they're a CPA, a tax attorney, or even women involved in, um, you know, with the senators and charity events. So it's just a matter of meeting individuals and, we tell each other what we do and how we can better help our community. And the word just spreads, you know, because everybody's looking for financial independence and everybody can, you know, receive that. So, guys, if you're watching this right now, you're tuning into the Movement Podcast. You're watching us live right now on Facebook at Money Smart Guy. If you're finding us on uh, YouTube, you're looking at the Money Smart Guy channel. And if you've got questions, if you're watching this live right now, and if you've got questions about how to make six figures, how do I make, how do I take control of my finances? Uh, go ahead and chop your comments below and we just might select you live to answer your question for both six figure earners, Donna Malikian and Tommy Clark. And if you want to ask me, yours truly, the host of the show as well. So what about you, Tommy? I mean, what are you seeing? Same question goes to you. What are you seeing right now in, in, the, in the marketplace as people, as people are relating to how do I get ahead financially? Because it's just so tough, you know, living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah, I, I, I think it's um, we got to do some self uh, self realization as well, because I remember when I first got started, like I, I would sell myself the notion on there wasn't enough time in the day. And, you know, when I got started, I was um, in the process of, you know, working a full time job, planning a wedding, you know, playing semi pro basketball. So th there was like more than enough excuses for me to not do it. But I, I think that if we come together collectively as communities and as individuals and say, hey, look, why do I really want what I want? Am I willing to sacrifice some time in the beginning for a long term goal? Yeah, I, I think that a lot more people will realize that what they really want down the road is not really that far out of their reach. They probably just need somebody to help them with a little push along the way. Yeah, let, let's, let's talk about this little push, because let, let's talk about income that we really need to live on in America to live the American dream. Um, I'm looking at this report right now through. Um, through making $100,000 a year, Chicago Tribune. It says that 48% of all people living in Chicago admit, and this current survey, they cannot afford to live in the city of Chicago due to cost of living. Now, I'm in Chicago. Donna, you're in LA. Yes. Tommy, you're in Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. How far does a $100,000 a year income take somebody in your respective city? I mean, in LA, it depends on your lifestyle, but I, I did a hundred thousand in less than three months and I'm just like, oh my gosh, sometimes, you know, I joke about it with some of my mentors and I'm like, this is poverty, right? In th less than three months, but um, <laughs> it's definitely not enough inflation. Things are getting expensive by the minute. Median income has barely moved since the nineties, you know, and people are really uh, struggling. I mean, paycheck to paycheck, they don't even think about retirement let alone get started for it. So $100,000 is nothing nowadays, in my opinion. Guys, I'm looking, at this, um, I'm looking at this USA Today article, and this was three years ago. And so it says here, uh, the, the price, let me see if I can get it over here. The price tag for the American dream is $130,000 a year. $130,000 a year. So uh, uh, Tommy, you, you know, you're, you're, you're there in, in Jacksonville, Florida. I mean, with a husband, you've been a husband, wife, kid, business. How far does $100,000 really take you? I mean, it sounds like a big number, but does it really take you somewhere? No, I, I mean, I, I think it's a good starting point. It, it's like perfect if, if we want to, you know, kind of slap a label onto it, you know, the new minimum wage for $100,000. No um, because at this point, you can finally start to maybe save a few dollars here and there. Um, you know, for my wife and I, we're definitely starting to look at, 
uh, socking away for school because um, education costs, you know, have, have risen through the roof. Um, but, you know, for me, it, it's a starting point where, hey, look, 100,000 is, is like a good pat on the back. But at the end of the day, everybody wants to be standing cheered for it. So in that case, we've got to get things rocking and rolling up to the uh, 300 to half a mil type of bracket before some breathing room is really there. So if you're just watching this right now, you heard both Don and Malikian from Los Angeles, West Coast, Tommy Clark, Jackson, Florida, East Coast, and yours truly right here in Chicago, that making a $100,000 year income is a great starting point slash the new, what did Tommy just say? Minimum wage. So if you're watching this right now and you're not making $100,000, we don't want to make you feel bad. That's not the purpose of this live stream. We want to just challenge you to start thinking bigger and broader because why you deserve it you deserve to be not living be living paycheck to paycheck you deserve not to to have to table certain big decisions in your family just because right now you don't have the financial resources to do it i mean donna before your decision get involved in entrepreneurship what was a financial emergency from a dollar amount that would say man this i got to spend x amount of dollars for this because this emergency come up and by the way emergencies always come up Absolutely. That took you off your financial game plan. You had to drain everything you had, and then you had to start all over again. I mean, what type of financial emergency would, would disrupt you before you became an entrepreneur? Before becoming an entrepreneur and before getting educated in the financial services industry, Matt, everything was an emergency, <laughs> honestly. Oh, my gosh, I have to get my brakes fixed. You know, what is it, like less than a 1000 three, 400 bucks nowadays? I don't know. It was an emergency. Oh, my God, what am I going to do? How am I going to pay for rent? It's going to take away from my car payment. And then insurance, everything was an emergency because I was not organized. I had no idea what to do, you know. And now it's, you know, you get an accident, nine, ten grand. Okay, no big deal. Here you go. Because I learned how to um, take control, better myself, better my life and my understanding, right, mentally and uh, put together a plan. So everything was an emergency. <laughs> yeah. I mean, think about that real quick, Don. What, what do people do to try to Crazy. save money instead of spending three, 400 bucks on a brake job? You know what they do? They go down to Advanced Auto Parts. They buy their own brake, uh, uh, disc brake pads. And they go in this weekend, do their own brake job. And how often have you done brakes before in your life? Never. It's my first time. Do you ever want to trust yourself for doing Never. your own brake job? Because I remember that happened in the Marines. We, we did that. Some guy tried to do his own brakes, and he couldn't, he couldn't stop. And he, 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 he yanked up on the uh, emergency brake, which is the back back uh, dr uh, brake drums. But he screwed something up on his uh, on his own brakes. You don't want to do that. If you, can, if you don't want to do that with your car, because it's going to cost you your life, well, well, more so your own money. Right, right, Donna? Absolutely. Tommy, what about you, man? What financial emergency, from a monetary standpoint, would get you off track just because – you know, finances were an issue. Man, I, I would have to piggyback off of Donna. It's like, you know, something comes up and, and you just start sweating bullets. And then you start thinking about, okay, man, do I have to go give blood? Do I have to go do this? Like, what do I have to sell? Like, is, is there like, a, you know, is somebody else holding a garage sale where I can bring my stuff and maybe sell my stuff there so I don't have to set it all up? So uh, I'm, I'm in agreement with Donna 100% on that one. And I think for the veterans that are watching this show, because I've got a lot of veterans watching uh, former military guys transitioning into business, I think you guys will appreciate it. Anytime I came across an emergency, I went to donate blood. Right? I went to donate blood. Matter of fact, I, I have a tattoo here on my right shoulder as evidence that uh, I donated blood and got a tattoo from because I donated <laughs> paycheck to paycheck. So um, let, let's, ju let's jump into a couple questions here. So Caesar has got a great question here. So what's the best way? Best and fastest way to unlearn your employee habits to get to a six a high six figure income. So Donna, what, what would you say to that? What, wow, that's unlearn? amazing. I talk about that all the time with my team. So I think that unlearning employee habits is like anything else. You have to do it for at least twenty one days, right? But you have to understand that no longer is somebody telling you, for example, Donna, you're worth $10 an hour and you have to work this many hours in order to make that amount. You have to start believing in yourself that, hey, look, I'm worth five grand a day maybe. I used to make $5 an hour, right? So it's, it's all in your belief and your mindset. And you have to understand that you don't always have to um, 
So as an employee, you must meet a quota in order to keep your job and hold on to it and hope that they don't let you go, right? So it's really about broadening your vision and understanding that it's not always going to be, I'm going to have to trade something tangible, right, in order to receive monetary income. Um, it's just really your vision and your belief and your habits. And guys, if you're tuning in right now, you're listening to Donna Malik and answer that question on how to unlearn your employee habits. Why? Because in three months, three months, three months, she earned one hundred thousand dollar income. So, Donna, you're, you're you're shaking some ground here. So, uh, what about you, Tommy? You know, I mean, you were uh, in mortgages. You know, you're in, you're in a sales type of position. How, how do you start? How do you stop thinking like a salesperson and start thinking like a business person? Uh, I would say that the easiest or maybe the fastest way to do it is to change your associations. Um, you, you know, it's funny. My daughter is now like a year and three months. And it's so weird. Like she she teaches me so much because like if you look at her, she's just coming into her personality. And a lot of times like her habits are all based off of what mom and dad's habits are. Right. So, you know, for me, from a human perspective, we as humans tend to learn from those people that are around us. So if you're trying to, you know, Hey, how do I become an entrepreneur? How do I change, you know, maybe the things that I do? The easiest way is to change your associations. Because if you start hanging around other people and other people are like, hey, look, bro, you need to stop changing, you know, or exchanging your, your time for money and exchange your money for time, then you're automatically be taught in those habits just because you're around them. I like that. When I, when I had one of my first homes, I had the least expensive house on the most expensive block. I liked it, but you know who didn't like it? Everybody else. My neighbors. <laughs> you know, Matt, I uh, appreciate you moving to this neighborhood, but uh, are you going to uh, uh, improve your property? Are you going to put an extension? Are you, are you going to increase the value of your home? Because you are pulling us all down or keeping us at the same level because you are not improving your home. I'm like, what are you talking about, man? I, get, I just barely got in this neighborhood, man. Now you want me to improving my house, but translating that to business, are you around people that they're pulling you up all the time, but mentally speaking, you're either pulling them down or keeping them stagnant because mm -hmm. they're not, they don't feel uncomfortable around you. So I, I like what you said there, man. So, so that let's talk about how, okay. This is part of the show. This is part of the uh, conversation where we say, how, how did you do it? I mean, let's break it down to, Maybe um, a point you mentioned earlier, you had some influencers in your corner. But if you're going to tell, if some people are watching this right now, how do you start making $100,000 a year, man? What's some of the steps that you need to take to start putting you in a, in a position to make $100,000 a year? Not because we just want to, but this case in America right now is America stands. We need to so we can stop living paycheck to paycheck. How would you start doing that, Donna? Absolutely. I, the first thing, Matt, is that you must make a decision, right? So everybody, like you were saying, oh. they're extremely comfortable right now. Nine to five, everything's comfortable. It's easy. It's, you know, a habit. It's a schedule. You must get uncomfortable with where you are. You must understand and have a conversation with yourself. And this is everything I did. <laughs> I was extremely uncomfortable where I was. I said, I don't want to live like this anymore. 20 years from now, I'm thinking future, whether it's personal and professional, I don't want to be where I am right now. Am I working towards not being where I want to be right now? No. So a decision needs to be made ASAP. I need to get uncomfortable. I need to understand that I have to take these risks for myself and my future. So that's the first thing is making a decision quick and sticking to it. And, um, you know, thank God for this opportunity that I had because everybody is really just looking for that opportunity with a system. And once you find that and you have the right mentors, it's absolutely amazing. So I made that decision. It wasn't easy, right? Completely but that, but shook up my whole life. Did you have to invest a lot of money into starting your business? It was the best couple hundred dollars I ever invested in my life. Literally. I think like my after my first paycheck was like, what was it like 17 grand, 18 grand? I was right out of the red, right? In like 2.5 seconds. I said, my God, instead of spending all this money going to Pepperdine and trying to have that degree and get in debt for a quarter of a million dollars, you know, um, it was wow. the best investment I ever made in my life. So in other words, you found a business in the insurance industry, 
with PHP agency that for a couple hundred bucks, you getting your state uh, of California insurance license. The next 30 days, you made 17 grand. Yes. Actually, the next two weeks, 12 days. <laughs> hey, guys, dro drop yeah. down a comment. Drop <laughs> some, give us some love on that one. Okay. So now, now people want to know, though, but how'd you do it? I made a decision, Matt. I made a decision and I completely changed my habits. Um, I decided that I had to come up with a schedule, right? So I wake up at a certain time every morning, no later than about 6.45, 7 a.m. Sometimes I'm up at 5 because I'm so fired up to start the day, right? Um, and I have specific things that I do. I'll pop out of bed. I make the coffee. I, I make the bed. And then I get on the you know emails. I'm in the office by 8.30 or so. And visiting 7 to 10 families a day. It's just a matter of making a decision based on a system that you believe in. So this system through PHP agency is absolutely clearly bulletproof, right? All you need is the right leadership, which is our phenomenal CEO, amazing sidelines, like all the other um, mentors that we have in our company that are just a phone call away and just following that and creating a better lifestyle for yourself, you know, um, staying away from the negative habits, meditating. I do this stuff all the time. It's really about bettering yourself and when you're 100 percent, everything else around you works and you can go ahead and make a hundred thousand and nine paychecks <laughs> nine paychecks i love that so if, if you if you break that down guys let, let me break that down real quick i'm a so a hundred thousand income divided by nine paychecks uh let me, let me do that man uh divided by nine that's an average every time she got paid it's eleven thousand eleven thousand dollars a paycheck how would you like the guys? And she went, she went from retail. She went from selling cars, right? Now she understands the insurance industry and how to serve and help people. Amazing. So I like what you said that there too, as um, seven to 10 clients a day. So people, people think that just because, you know, they get a license or they get started a business, just because they put their sign on the door saying they're open for business doesn't mean that a flood of people are just, oh, thank you, Donna. Thank you for being in business. You went to go see them. Definitely. Yeah. And it's I always make sure that I have three pieces of results every day. So whether it's for myself or my team, um, you know, depending on what the product is and how the meetings went throughout the day. And it's always a minimum of seven to ten. And um, as long as I have three results per day, then we're good to go. So no, she's playing the numbers game. So in other words, for every seven to ten people she's talking to, three of the seven to ten, am I right in saying that? Yes. Three, minimum. three min minimum three. So in order to get to three minimum to say yes or I'll think about it or let's meet again, she's got to go through seven to ten. So there it is, metrics. Put put in uh, math in her favor. Uh, Tommy, what about what about you, man? You're a uh, you're a, uh, a semi pro basketball player. Yep. What happens is a basketball player, you're shooting um, your free throws. And you make seventy to eighty percent of your free throws. Are you are you pretty decent or what? Man, I am signing multi seven to eight figure contracts <laughs> a year, baby. <laughs> but so in other words, you got you got to put your your feet on the feet on line and get in your position to shoot the free throw. Yep. If you just wait for that one free throw, it's not going to happen. So, Tommy, how, how did you make your money, man? You just crossed over a hundred thousand dollars year income. How did you? How would you answer that question? Man, it's it's so simple, and it, and it's like um like Donna hit it right on the head. Uh, like it, it's not really rocket science to it. Like it, it's really that simple. Like one, you you got to make the decision and say, hey, look, I'm actually worth this amount of money every single year. Because a lot of times, you know, we've been told, oh man, you'll never make that type of money, or you know, I just never have seen you like have that type of identity to bring that stuff in. But at the end of the day, if if you're willing to tell yourself, hey, I can, and and this is what I'm worth. Right. You make that decision. You, you find good people that you put in your corner that truly believe in you and can help you learn to process issues. Right. And, and then you figure out how to hold yourself accountable and you get motivated. Man, it, this business is so simple and it's so easy. Right. Uh, a lot of times we just get in our own heads and we think, man, I, I don't know if I can do it. So let's let's talk about actually putting those numbers and figures. I remember coming out the Marine Corps. I mean, I mean, I mean, guys, you, you using a phone. <laughs> Are you kidding me? So, so Donna, how are you reaching out to people? Um, is it a different 
pitch or a different script? Uh, how, how are you doing this every day? I think because the agency and the leadership and the mentorship changed my life drastically, um, it literally runs through my veins now. It's any conversations outside of being able to help individuals and share and spread the vision of PHP agency. I literally cannot continue on the conversation. I don't know how to explain it. Um, so it's, I talk to everybody. It's just a simple, hello, hi, how are you? You know, um, some of the biggest leaders in my team that joined us less than four or five months ago who have, you know, 50 individuals under them was because I liked her energy and I simply introduced myself. Um, and I just said, hi, how are you? We had great conversation. And if I see myself being able to have a cup of coffee with you, I want to be in business with you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because we're entrepreneurs, we get to choose who we want to work with. And I think that's why we're all so happy and, you know, just such positive environment, but it's, it's really about just speaking to people. Hi, how are you? Um, it comes up in conversation and you go from there. They either want to help themselves or they know somebody who needs help. Everybody needs some sort of financial advice, some sort, you know. What about you, Tommy? You just mentioned earlier in this pod, uh, podcast uh, live stream that you sat down with a trainer of a professional sports organization. Yeah. But how, how, did you, how do you get in front of, like Don is getting in front of influencers, Yep. Sounds like you're getting in front of influencers too. So a lot of people are asking questions. How do I do it? How do I do it? You're getting in front of people that can lead you to other people. So what do you pitch? What, what's your what's your uh, value proposition? Excuse my, my, yeah, uh, mine's just always coming from a place of genuineness. Um, the individual I sat with today, I actually met at the gym. And, you know, for, for those guys that know me, like I, I kind of treat the gym like I want to be the mayor of the gym. Meaning when I go in there, look, if you guys would both laugh at me if you ever tried to see me lift any weights. Right? Like, I'm better at shaking hands in the gym than I am at actually lifting weights. <laughs> you, have, you have a good forearm and upper <laughs> bicep. The, yeah, the grip is getting real tight, but I'm um, shooting. It, it's just making sure that anywhere I go, uh, I, I like complimenting good service and, and people that just have a good aura about them. And, you know, o over time, as, as you start finding out, hey, look, man, this, this guy, you know, he's got two kids, another one's on the way. Him and his wife have been together for seven years. And, and what's funny is, is, you know, he, he starts asking me inquisitively about what I do. And I'm like, hey, look, bro, I'm, I'm, I just want to learn a little bit more about you. And, and that just even starts striking the conversation up more because I'm sure everybody's seen that there's a lot of people out there that, that just go straight for the jugular every time. And they're all about, hey, what can you do for me? What can you do for me? What can you do for me? And if we kind of switch that notion and have a giver's mentality, it, it's so weird how the universe just kind of gives back to everybody who just thinks selflessly rather than selfishly. Love it, man. Absolutely. Let's, uh, as, we, as we button up this show, uh, Don, I want to ask you the uh, last couple of questions here. So somebody's watching this live stream right now, and they, they're thinking that making $100,000 a year, let alone seven-figure year income, is literally impossible, right? They're coming from average and ordinary neighborhoods. They're coming from making, you know, 15 25 35 bucks an hour at most. Um, what would you say to somebody out there who's listening to it right now, maybe looking for for a ray of hope from you about making this type of money? This type of money. What, what would you say to that person? So that was me, right? That's exactly where I came from. And um, starting the business, it was initially just supposed to be something part time. I was going to be okay with like two, three, right, two or three thousand dollars a month, and then um, it turned into five because I just kept up following the system and being consistent and then it turned into 10 right and then it turned into 15 and now we're doing like 30 40 almost 50 grand a month so it's absolutely possible um, you just have to make that decision no excuses you have to make that decision put a plan in play ASAP follow the system of which is bulletproof and the money will follow that's that's my biggest advice that's exactly what happened to me I made a decision and, um, you know, like Tommy was saying, you're organic about it and you love what you do. Business goes from your head to your heart. Literally, the money starts following you. But, but Don, you know, I, I started my life as an entrepreneur and my friends and family and nobody's responding to me on Facebook anymore and blah, 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 blah. They say all these things about me and they're sending me weird text messages and private messages. What do you say to them? 
I let that go. My friends and family that don't believe in my vision are not feeding my vision to change my life and my family's legacy, um, let alone the community and help strangers. So I actually cut a lot of that out. I have a completely new life. I have, um, you know, just so much. It's a much better situation for me because I decided to believe in Donna instead of having others believe in Donna so that she can do it. That's the mindset. You have to believe in yourself. And at the end of the day, who cares what people think? You have a headache, you have to take Advil to make it feel better, right? <laughs> Nobody else can take it for you and make you feel better. So once you make that decision, what's going to happen, even though they're not encouraging you at the time, um, they will start wondering and then they'll end up joining you in business. So you have to stop caring about what people think about you start caring about you and feed your own vision and your dreams and let everybody else come on in. You know, it's funny is uh, people think, because, you know, the, the uh, our mentor, Patrick, but David put on his private, uh, put on his Facebook group. He just gave Sheena and I a shout out for making seven figures a year. Yes. And he, he, put, he put this thing, he put this thing, you know, boom, congratulations, Matt and Sheena. Da, da, da. And you would think that, a lot of my friends and family would reach out to me and say, congratulations, Matt. You know, just like, you know, talent show, your friends, you know, high five you, whatever the case may be. Friends, listen, not one outside of my immediate family, outside of my sister, my mother, and, and my father, but my father didn't support me for a while. None of my cousins. And by the way, a lot of my cousins are probably watching this right now. None of them reached out to me and said, congratulations. None of them said, good job. You know? But, but anytime they want, at the end of the year, they always are doing fundraising for whatever they want to do fundraising for. Guess who's always on their speed dial for that, right? And I have no problem giving, but uh, it, it's, it's, it's interesting. Whether you make six figures or seven figures or half a million dollars or two million, you know, you, you think that your friends and family would merely support you. Eventually, they come around, um, but you just, like we just said, Don, you do you. Exactly. Absolutely. Tommy, what about you, man? I mean, listen, you you come from a – you're doing this business because complete, obviously, self-worth. You have some very successful uncles in business. Yep. Uh, we were having a conversation yesterday about what it took for them to create, to create the first million, the first 10 million, the first 100 million, the first $500 million in business. Oh, my God. And right yep. here, and here you are making your first $100,000. So, you know, but what's what's starting to happen now with your your, your friends and family? What's, what's, what's going on now? Well, everybody's, um, you know – now 100% supportive. And, um, you know, the, the way that I kind of look at it, Matt, is like, look, you know, family is, is always going to be there. But a lot of times if they're not supportive, I don't really take it as a negative outlook. Maybe they're just trying to play the, the role of protector, right? Because everybody's seen what's going on in America. And, and there's more reasons than not to be negative because that's what the media portrays, right? So I, I think that if, if we as entrepreneurs can say, hey, look, my family's not supportive, not because they don't believe in me, but just because they want to protect me. And then we kind of take self-evaluation and an ownership of it and say, hey, look, let me give my family a reason to believe in me. Let me go out there and crack that, that six-figure income. Let me go out there and become a leader. Let me go out there and do stuff that people say that I could never do. I, I think a lot of times, more than not, family will eventually come back around. Absolutely. Now, let's, let's talk about one last how factor. Before we wrap stuff up, you know, it's, it's very, very difficult in this day and age to kind of stumble across making $100,000 a year. I think between the two of you, one thing I know about you both is you both are very consistent. So what, what, what areas of consistency from looking back in the last three months, four months, six months, a year, what areas of consistency would you, you know, guide people in to help them start making $100,000? 200,000, 500,000, seven figures a year. What areas of consistency? As far as consistency, Matt, I think it, it starts with uh, self-development. So you have to consistently be physically where you need to be, right? Whether that's the gym or affirmations or motivations in the morning, you time, right? 10, 15 minutes, I take uh, some time to better my, my mental and then physical, right? You need to be able to endure the challenges and the amazing successes that come with being an entrepreneur. So that's definitely one thing that you need to focus on. And um, as far as being consistent, it's really holding yourself accountable for other people. Understanding that you're, this is a very, like Tommy was saying, it's a very selfless business. So you're doing this for other individuals. 
and uh, making sure that you understand that there's people counting on you and you can't be selfish and take like a minute off or like, I'll do this later. Absolutely no procrastination. Everything is now, just do it now. Like Nike, right? Just do it. So um, that's, I think those are maybe three or four of the biggest things that I hold on to every day, no matter what, um, just do it, get it done understand that people are counting on you and you can't let them down. You, you have to lead by example and um, make sure that you're right, you know, physically and mentally. I love it. Tommy, how would you answer that same question? Man, I, I think I would just literally mimic Donna. Um, you know, a lot of times it's, it's our health that's most important because when we're in the people business, if, if our health or something goes or, or we're not on top of it, you know, our energy is, um, you know, effect, it affects other people. Um, or infectious. And, you know, if we can develop disciplines and habits to just stay consistent and, and always be that guy or girl that can be relied upon from the guys and girls that need, you know, you to be relied upon. Uh, I think that, you know, um, the law of the universe will, will, will eventually reward you for all the hard work and the effort that you may not see immediate results from. Awesome. All right, guys, listen, you guys have been awesome, gracious, and obviously sharing tons of value. I appreciate you both for being the guests on the Movement Podcast here at uh, Money Smart Guy on Facebook and Money Smart Guy on YouTube. Uh, guys, if you're watching this right now and you haven't had the opportunity to follow these two amazing individuals here, this is Donna Malikian from Los Angeles. She just made $100,000 in the last three months. And this is Tommy Clark from Jacksonville, Florida, who he to himself uh, just crossed over $100,000 a year in income. And if you're one and find out, what are they doing? Well, I just want to cut to the chase, guys. They are in the insurance industry. They happen to come from not a financial background. Uh, Tommy was, well, somewhat with Tommy with mortgage background, data, retail, and car sales. I didn't come from a financial background. And we're able to, to still make it happen. Why? Because Donna kept repeating something, which is following a system. And if you're an aspiring entrepreneur out there right now, and you're trying to figure out what that passion is. You're trying to figure out what is it that you're going to do. You're trying to figure out what your plan B while you're still at your job, which is plan A, but you're working on plan B. And you're looking for a system. You're looking for a process. You're looking for mentors. You're looking for association. Well, then reach out to us. Drop us a message. Drop us a comment. Hit us up. Let us know I'm in this city and this state. I would love to connect with Donna Malikian. I would love to connect with Tommy Clark. Matt, I'd love to connect with you. If that's true, go ahead and, and click send us a message, whatever, however you communicate with us. You can, we can be found on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, the whole, the whole deal. And if we can't directly help you and you happen to be in Texas or Northern California or New York or in Boston, we can help you because chances are we have people in your local market, in your local community to connect you with to have not just things online, because listen, people don't need information, okay? People aren't looking for information. We got YouTube for that. You know what people are looking for? They're looking for leadership. And if you love to connect with Donna, you look to connect with Tommy, you look to connect with myself, you look to connect with people inside PHP agency all across the country to help establish a business in the insurance industry to help you make a six-figure, half, half million year income or million dollar year income, well, I'm glad you stumbled across the right podcast. And for those of you who are sharing this already, okay, if you guys are sharing this already, if you haven't done so, um, uh, the book of the month is this, Principles by Ray Dalio. Okay, Ray Dalio is kind of like the, uh, he's kind of like the uh, Steve Jobs of the investment world. But he wrote a book, instead of investments, he decided to write a book on principles. And so if you can lay on principles, that's a foundation of what you do. I love to give this to you guys. I'm going to pick a winner. We're going to go over reviews. We're, we're going to respond to your comments. And we'll pick a winner. Whoever shares this in multiple groups, whoever shares this the most, not just on your personal profile, but to, you happen to be part of a, a Jacksonville uh, Chamber of Commerce group, you happen to be of a, a, a Los Angeles veteran group, and you share it multiple times, your personal page, on your friend's page, um, and you, you make it public, we're going to look for those shares. And we're going to send you this book, Principles by Ray Dalio, from us to you, from us to to you because sharing is caring and we care about you that's why we do these live streams to get value and, let, and plug you into a community of people that want to know more that people want to have more and more importantly people that want to do more 
and be more and so more after that. So, hey, guys, uh, Tommy, thanks for your time, bro. Yep, thanks, man. John Malikin, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much. much. God, God, guys. And with that being said, guys, thank you for tuning in to the Movement Podcast, where each week we have conversations like this on Wednesday or Thursday afternoons at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. We want to help bring value to you by improving your know-how, improving your attitude and behaviors to winning the money game. Because we want to transform the way you think, feel, manage, and reach towards financial independence. With that being said, guys, thanks for tuning in. Before you uh, 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 log off, subscribe to our YouTube channel and make sure you hit like on our Facebook page too as well. Chanel, uh, Nanu, Nanu Barbosa, Flor Marokin, uh, Patrick Carson, Wahim Perez, Sierra Sherrod, Kim Euler, Sam Lancaster, Daniel Gandada, Flor Marokin, and the list goes on and on and on and on. Thank you guys for your comments. Thank you guys for your questions. Thanks for tuning in. Till we meet again. Continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be mighty smart today.